All right, class. So today we're going to be completing our very first flip classroom lesson. And the topic of the lesson today is going to be the elements of a short story. So first, our objectives are we're going to identify the elements of a short story, we're going to define the elements of a short story, and finally we're going to demonstrate mastery of short story elements. So first you might be wondering, what is a short story? So a short story is going to be a brief fictional, meaning that it's not real, narrative that is shorter than a novel and usually deals with only a few characters. And it's also usually going to be 7,500 words or under, and it's going to focus on one single event or idea. So it's going to be different than a novel that may focus on a lot of characters and a lot of different events. And on the left side I have some examples of short stories and on the top I have The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe which we will begin reading later on this week and below that I have The Gift of the Magi which is an also well-known short story that I encourage you guys to read on your own time because it's very good. Okay, so these are the five elements. They're going to be character, setting, plot, conflict, and theme. And as we go along, you guys are going to be filling out the graphic organizer I gave to you in the last class. And you're welcome to pause the video as you guys write. So, the first element we have is character. Now a character is going to be a person or a creature that interacts with the story. And this is essential to the story. This is the author's way of making the story relatable to you. And the characters also make the story come alive. And here I have some examples from Finding Nemo. And I have some major characters from the film. And they're going to be Dory and Merlin and Nemo. Now some minor character would be Crush the turtle, so he doesn't play as vital of a role to the story as Dory or Merlin do. Okay, next we have the setting, and this is going to tell the reader where and when the story takes place. So again, with the example of Finding Nemo, the setting is going to be under the sea, that's the where. And the when in Finding Nemo would be present day. So in other stories, the time period might be different. Like if you say, or you think about Little House on the Prairie, that's going to be taking place in the 1800s. So knowing the time period is vital to understanding the text. So just remember those two pieces. It's not just where it is, but also when it is. Okay, and next I have plot. And this is going to be the series of events in which the writer reveals what is happening to whom and why. And the plot is going to be a planned logical series that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the image I have here is of the plot mountain. And this is going to be how most plots are organized. So it goes rising action, climax, and falling action. So if we're using that example of Finding Nemo again, the rising action would be Nemo being taken. The climax would be Nemo being found. And then the falling action would just be their, their family being reunited and as the story kind of comes together and ends. That's the falling action. Okay, the next element we have is conflict. This is going to be a struggle between two opposing forces, and it's usually a protagonist and an antagonist. So your protagonist is going to be your good guy, and your antagonist is going to be your bad guy. So that example of protagonist and antagonist is going to be an external conflict which is a struggle with a force outside of oneself. 
but there can also be other types of conflicts in stories. And a common one, common one is internal conflicts. And this is going to be a struggle within one's self. So this could be a character overcoming an illness or some kind of pain. So it doesn't always have to be between a protagonist and an antagonist, but it can be within yourself. Or it could be a character versus nature or society. So the conflict can take on many forms within a story. So it's vital to remember that. All right, and the last element we have is theme. And this is going to be the underlying meaning or message of the story. And I say that it's your takeaway. What are you taking away from the story? What are you learning? Now this sometimes can be a kind of confusing element for students and people in general to understand because it often gets confused with the topic or the plot of the story. But a theme is going to give us a meaning or a message. It's not just going to tell us what happens in the story or what the story is about. So again, with Finding Nemo, an example of a theme from that could be the theme of family or the theme of love and devotion and hope because you know, Merlin never gave up hope when he was searching for his son and was fueled by love to find him. All right, so we're just going to do a quick review and these are kind of the words that are vital to the definitions. These are good ones for you guys to remember and to keep in your mind. So character is going to be the who. Setting is going to be the where and the when. Plot's going to be the series of events. Conflict is the struggle. And theme is the message. So again, you guys will complete the graphic organizers that I gave you last class and fill those out with definitions from this video and bring them to tomorrow's class for me to collect. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video.